Hello everyone, it's Chaplain April, and I am recording the Trials Playlist number three. Um, I thought we would talk a minute about what trials mean. When I say trials, I'm talking about, you know, in Christianity, biblical trials. Um, I had it pulled up on my phone. There's three different types of trials. Uh, let's see if I can remember them. Trials that um, happen because of our own sin. Um, number two, trials um, that happen because we live in a fallen world. And then number three is trials that God may put you through. That's more like a testing of your faith. So we can have trials for many different reasons, just in our own personal life. And someone that is a devout Christian that is doing things for God, that is um, doing their best to walk um, out their faith journey um, every step as best they can and follow God's plan for their life, they're going to have more attacks. So I don't know where the attacks would fit in those three, maybe in the number two, uh, because we live in a fallen world and the enemy is going to attack us. Um, but the more you're doing for God, the more things that you are doing to influence for his kingdom, uh, the more attacks you're going to have from the enemy. So basically, if you're going through trials, it shows that you're doing something right and for God. And um, I know that may sound, you know, strange to people or whatever, but that's basically how it works. Uh, we're always going to have trials and so right now, the trials that I've been going through are kind of easing up a little bit right now, which is good. But um, I was telling someone the other day, I feel like I just go from trial to trial. And so a lot of people think, well, there's something wrong in her life or she's doing something wrong um, or she wouldn't go through all of this. And that's actually the opposite of what the truth is, because if... I am trying to influence for God's kingdom, trying to bring, bring souls into the kingdom. Do you think the enemy wants that? No, he doesn't. So he's going to try his best to derail me, if at all possible. So we have to stand firm in the trials. And I'm sorry, I didn't have um, the verse um, pulled up here that I wanted to write down, but... I can put it in the description. Um, I was going to use my laptop to record, but it's telling me that it doesn't have any more space on it, so I don't even know how to fix that. So now I'm on my phone. So all the stuff I had on my phone pulled up, we're not going to be able to use. I do keep scriptures around to help me. This one is Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So this is a good one to have. I actually had this at work. I just grabbed it on my way out today. Um, but anything that you can hang on to that tells you that God is your rock, you know, and that's what God tells us that we can trust in him we really can't trust in people um case in point you know in my life i you know whoever you think you can trust you just don't know uh if you can or not because things can be said or or twisted around um to make that person even kind of go against you so the only one that you can really hold on to is god and i've i've learned that i've had to learn that the hard way and I don't want to run around and say that, oh, you just can't trust anyone. But that's kind of the point that I'm at right now. I really don't trust. Um, the only one I trust fully is God. Let's just put it that way. Oh, <laughs> one of the things that um, I was going through in the trial that I was in recently, um, someone was saying that they had all this proof against me and I'm going proof <laughs> uh, proof okay I mean if you're gonna say something like that you better know what you're talking about so so here's here's something that is very it's, it's a dangerous thing to do if you know that the person that you are coming against is a devout um, 
Christian, one of God's elect righteous people, then you're actually putting yourself in danger if you're coming against that person. And if you notice in my videos, I don't really talk about um, who might be, you know, false prophet or a false teacher or anything like that, because um, that's a dangerous thing to do. You know, there's people that speak up against um, all kinds of different um, preachers, teachers, whatever. But you... <laughs> You don't know. If, if you think you know, you better know 100%. Just like this person that was saying they had proof against me. I'm like, I was telling my son, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still looking for the proof. Like, there's, there's no proof. So if you're going to accuse someone, then you better know. You better know what you're saying. You better have proof, facts, and all of that. And um, so whoever out there that you think might be a false preacher, false teacher, um, you know, the way that we can know that is by someone's fruits. So, you know, but God appoints certain people to speak out of, uh, about them. So, you know, if God didn't tell you to speak out about them, then, then I wouldn't do it because you may be speaking against them wrongly. And if you are speaking against one of God's righteous elect people, then then there's a scripture that says you're going to fall into the trap that you set for them. So, you know, you don't, you're putting yourself really in danger. That's all I have to say about that. But, you know, there's people that don't like uh, Joel Osteen or different, different preachers. And you don't know exactly, then, then you can put yourself in danger because that person is one of God's righteous elect. And you don't want to speak out against them um, and hurt them. So, like, I spoke out against, you know, a certain, um, you know, denomination or something like that. That's a whole different, it's kind of a different thing. Um, life update. So, I've got my syllabi right here for my classes. And we, each class had five books to order. And that's one of the things that Amazon has made so much better for people is you can order your books very inexpensively. I ordered all my books for about a hundred dollars and so I've got stacks of books here I'll just show you a couple of them these are some of the books for my class my classes I I don't even know some of them I ordered for myself so I'm not really sure which ones are class books and which ones are not but the books are definitely stacking up here so the first class, I was trying to figure out, yes, this is the first class. So on day one, they have us doing, let's see, the pre-class writing assignment is to read and submit critical book reviews of the books. Okay, so two of the books. And then, let's see. On day two, there's a 20-minute presentation that each person has to do um, on how those books provide biblical grounding for the student's view of leadership and the student's sense of vocation. So for presentation, um, I would like to kind of be one of the first ones to do it. That way I don't have to like stress about it and have all this anxiety <laughs> about it. Um, so then... On day two, students must share their calling to ministry story and be prepared to receive questions and comments on the importance of their own cultural context for understanding their sense of their call or calls. Day three, students must offer a class presentation on the usefulness of two of the other books. And then there will be a final essay. We have to read these essays then we have to read these essays, and then each student will share their reflections on what Roe calls a Christ-shaped leader and how their essays contribute to more contribute more biblical grounding for a student's sense of leadership. And then the pro there's a group project 
at the end of the class on day five, and then there's a final essay of a 12 to 15 page paper. Okay, so this one we had, we have to write two book reviews. The second class, we have to write a book review on all of the books. So there's five books for this one. So two page assessment paper of each book and then a three page, the pre-course assignments, and then a three page paper reflecting on your own personal experiences with leading others. Uh, one in-class oral presentation of sup a supplementary reading article, a 10 page research paper, and then also small group work. So we have a lot of pre-course assignments. Um, so I need to write papers on seven of the books prior to class. I mean, a two page isn't so bad, but I've got to get to reading all of these books. And then what else do we have here? And they have a lot of um, recommended readings. So the second class is, they have it more in detail here of what we're doing. Uh, so anyway, that'll be interesting. There's also, there's a research project. I think there was a group thing there too. So anyway, I have that all coming up. I really have to start reading and writing for that. Um, let's see. I'm sorry I haven't been making videos, but these, you know, trial things that I was going through, it really kind of ruined my Easter, which is a big travesty because Easter is my absolute favorite and I did not enjoy my Easter at all this year. It was really awful. Um, you know, I like to do like a big dinner and, and have a family dinner and all of that. And I just even gave up on that. It was just so hard this year. And, um, it really makes me sad because I love everything about Easter. I love everything about the spring. Um, you know, I love the colors and the weather and all the things. And, you know, um, that was kind of robbed from me this year. But um, the main thing is that you can't rob anyone of what actually, you know, happened. Um, Christ did, did resurrect and no one can change that. No one can ever change that. And no one can take that from us. So even if the day for me was not so great, the reason that Easter is, you know, is a big thing is still there. So, you know, thank God for that. <laughs> so, all right. So the playlist that I am recommending. Oh, the reason, even though the trials are kind of waning for me, I know that we're always going to have trials in our life. Any Christian, you know, anyone that alive on the earth is going to have trials. But if you're a Christian, you're definitely going to have trials. And um, uh, the main reason I wanted to bring that up is because, and I've never spoken on this before, but we are in the end times. So, um, you know, we use the Gregorian calendar um, here in the West, but um, a lot of people use the Jewish calendar. And on there, um, we are in, what year are we in? Is it 58, 80 something, 57, 80 something? Anyway, we are, um, people... I mean, no one knows the day and the hour that Jesus is coming, but we do know the season and we are definitely in the season where Jesus is going to come back. So there's a lot of things that I might do differently in my life if I knew that we had more time, if I knew that Jesus wasn't so close to coming. And um, I, I am doing things a certain way in my life because I know we don't have a whole lot of time left. And um, I'm just going to stay the course and try to do what I can to help God, you know, do, you know, get his bride ready, get his church ready for his coming. 
and um, so I watch a lot of the prophets. I try to make sure that I'm watching prophets that are proven. I don't want to watch just any prophet that pops up, um, but they are all, where everyone is saying the same thing, that we are at the end time. So one of the uh, recommended uh, things to watch I'm going to put down there is in the description is Jimmy Evans who is a pastor in Dallas um, he is on Daystar in the video Daystar is a Christian um, television network and the show on there is um, Table Talk with Joni and so Joni Lamb is now the owner because her husband passed away anyway this whole thing and um, Jimmy Evans is a guest on there, and he's talking about how we're in the end times. But he is saying that we are in the end of the end times. Because if you're someone like me, and you've heard all your life that we're in the end times, right? And my brother will say that. Oh, I've heard this my whole life. You know, they've been saying that for 30 years. Yeah, they have. So how much closer do you think we are now? So he actually said in the video that we are in the end of the end times. So if you look at everything that's happening with Israel, I mean, this is all prophetic. It's things that the Bible talks about, the things that Bi the Bible predicted. And then there's another, there's another video I was watching by Jimmy Evans where he was at um, Jensen Franklin's church in Georgia, Free Chapel. Um, if you've never heard of Jensen Franklin, look him up. That man can preach. I love me some Jensen Franklin. <laughs> and his southern accent is just, uh, it just suits him. But he can preach. And so Jimmy Evans, I guess, was at Free Chapel and speaking about the prophecies that have come true um, from the Bible. And if you look at the statistics, um, it is highly impossible almost that these prophecies have come true. They are unlikely to have come true, and they have. And so we are down to, gosh, I don't know. We're down to not many left in because we're at Revelation. If you look at, the, at where we are in history, we are at Revelation. Um, the last book of the Bible and in a certain place. Um, so that is a very informative video um, because he talks about when these prophecies were fulfilled and blah, 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 and where we're at. So that one was really, really neat. I guess you can just kind of look that one up. Um, so yes, we are in the end of the end times. And so... Um, that's why everything seems like it's going crazy right now. The world seems upside down. It is upside down. And um, I don't think that we have a whole lot of time left. Um, so if you are not a Christian, um, I would urge you to, to do the salvation prayer because um, you do not want to be left behind when um, the rapture happens and when Jesus comes and takes us all home, he's taking us home because um, the tribulation is going to be, it's, it's God's wrath for, for us turning our backs on him and all of the things. And so he doesn't want his elect to be here when that happens. And I don't want any of my loved ones I don't want any of my family, friends, loved ones to be here during that time. It's going to be a very horrible time. So if you are pre-tribulation, then you believe that the rapture is going to happen uh, before the tribulation. Or you could be mid-tribulation. You know, some people think that because um, the tribulation is a seven-year period. So pre-trib, you think it's going to happen before the seven years. Mid-trib, you think it's going to be about in the middle um, so, and post-trib, I don't even know why you would think that, because I don't think that God would want us here during that time. He's going to take us home to spare us from the evil that is coming. Um, and I'll share this. This is another thing I've never shared before, but I met a prophet, um, as a chaplain one day, um, and I won't tell you where or when, but well, I'll tell you sort of when. 
um, but when I met the family member of this person, they said, oh, they're going to minister to you more than you minister to them. And I thought, yeah, right. And it was a prophet. It was a prophet of God. And they were dying. They had cancer. And um, they started telling me a lot of things. And I wish that I had written some of this down. I just didn't understand the impact of it when it happened. It was just something that was very unexpected. But this person, I asked him a couple questions about one of my sons that was going through some things at the time, and he told me he's going to be fine. This person was a seer, so there's a prophet that is a seer. They can see into the spirit realm, and sometimes God will even let them see parts of history or whatever. And so he was seeing the tribulation. He was telling me some things that were going to happen, and he and he told me, the Antichrist is alive on the earth today. And this was four or five years ago. So, and I remember um, I was going to go back and visit that patient again and ask questions. And I was going to have this whole list of questions. Well, that patient died before I was able to go back and see them again. I didn't have a chance to ask them any more questions. So I don't know how old the Antichrist was at the time when he was saying that he was alive on the earth i should have said oh is he a baby is he a toddler you know how old is he because that would give us a clue in history uh, as to how much time we have left so i don't know but i do know the antichrist is alive on the earth today that was told to me personally by a prophet um and so um it's kind of freaky, but my mentor tells me that we should be excited because God put us here on the earth at this time in history for a reason. He has something specific for us all to do, and that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on doing what I need to do for God, bringing souls into the kingdom, and, you know, as much as the enemy wants to come against me, then it's going to have to be that way. It's, you know, it's going to have to be okay with me because... I know that that's happening because of what my call is and my destiny and my mission in life. And so it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But personally, I want that to fuel me to do more for God, not less. So when you get trials, when you go through trials, it weakens you. It really makes you want to give up. It makes you want to stop give up and just say, you know what, this is too hard. I can't do this. And you really are like a warrior in the middle of, of a fight and a battle. And you have to persevere uh, because what the enemy wants is you to give up. He wants you to give up so that you don't do your purpose on the earth. You don't finish your mission and you don't finish your call, you know, that God has you doing in your life. And it's been extremely difficult. This year has probably been the worst trials I've been through. And it has been nonstop for since, since the beginning of the year. And so this is probably the most weary that I have been. Um, especially, um, you know, not enjoying Easter and all those things. But, and, and, and are there days when I want to give up? Absolutely. And I'm extremely tired. I'm weary, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, and in every way. Um, but deep down, and that's the fighter in me because I, I am a fighter. And um, it makes me want to do more for God because I know that the reason that those those things are coming against me so harshly is because I must be making strides in God's kingdom. So try to remember that when you're going through difficulties. Now, make sure it's not something that happened to you because of your own sin. You know, that's a whole other discussion. So, you know, a righteous person is trying is going away from sin, is pushing sin out of their life. So, you know, you have to evaluate things and see where you're at. But if you know that you're a righteous person and you're, and you are focused on, um, doing God's will and doing God's perfect will, hopefully, 
then um, then you know you know that the trials coming against you are because you are making strides. So let's talk about these um, songs that I'm going to put in there today. So I'm going to put abandoned the live version. Oh, I'm going to have to look this up because I, okay, hold on. Okay, so it is Benjamin William Hastings and Brandon Lake. This song, I would say this song is fire. Um, and some of the lyrics in the song, I'm, I'm all about lyrics because I'm a writer and I love lyrics. And so to me, if there's a secular song and the beat is good, I'm still not going to listen to it if the lyrics are, are bad or evil because I'm just, I'm just not going to, <laughs> um, the lyrics must be, um, uplifting, good, something, um, that honors God. And that's why I listen to Christian music. It's just what I like. Um, because I believe the lyrics are, you know, the lyrics are good, anointed, whatever. So part of the lyric in there, let's see, what does it say? Something about matching God's surrender. So we, we want to try to match your surrender, but we can't really match Jesus's surrender. No one is ever going to match it. We can try, we can strive for it, we can hope, you know, that we can get there, but we're never going to match Jesus' surrender, but that's what we should be trying to do. Um, you know, Jesus uttered not a mumbling word, and that's not us. You know, we're always trying to defend ourselves, come back and, and defend, and why, why, you know, we didn't do this or whatever, and Jesus didn't do that. Um, so, but the lyrics in this song are amazing. This song is fire for sure. Then we have... Jen Johnson, um, you're gonna be okay. That is a very soft, you know, Christian song where it's just saying that um, God's got you, God's got your back, and that's the thing. When no one has your back here on earth, and no humans have your back, God does. Now that's if you're in the right and you know that you're doing right and you know you're not doing wrong and you know that you're following God, then you know he's going to have your back. Um, and, you know, I'm a ballad person. I love ballads. That's just my thing. Even when it's um, secular, secular music, I just am a ballad person. I just always have been. So that's one of those soft, um, good songs. Then I'm going to post Gyra, and this is Justin Bieber. What is Jaira? Well, Jehovah Jaira, that's one of God's names. God has a lot of names. So we've got Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah um, Sidkenu, Jehovah Jaira. Jaira is Jehovah my provider. But there's a song, it's called Jaira. And um, Justin Bieber had gotten really close to this pastor of Hillsong named Carl Lentz. And he was a pastor of one of the Hillsong churches. Anyone who's been in Christianity for a long time knows that Hillsong was, was um, the go-to music for years and years and years, 20, 30 years. Um, I started listening to Hillsong back when it was Darlene Sheck. And, you know, then it became, you know, all these other people. Um, and Hillsong is kind of... It's kind of dropped off a little bit because of some of, of the um, scandals that have happened with the church. That's such a travesty and it really breaks my heart because there's people that were getting influenced, um, even famous people like Justin Bieber, um, you know, that God is speaking to through these pastors and for them to fall for them to be leading a double life and fall, um, it, it's it's such a blow. It's such a blow to not only Christian to Christianity to you know to God, and it 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 damages people. And so that was a really hard thing for me to watch, knowing that you know Justin Bieber was was getting mentored by this guy, and then he finds out he had this double life, 
and he fell and from grace and you know the bible says pride pride comes before a fall but when someone in the christian community like that that is very recognized falls it really creates havoc it just it destroys a lot and so that that's one of the reasons people don't believe or they don't want to believe or they don't want to listen to christians or they don't want to listen to pastors or whatever because of the hypocritical things that happen and and this is one of those times where that happened and then there was another scandal with hillsong i don't really know but um that one really broke my heart because I know that um, Justin Bieber was really coming close to God um, during that time and everything. So this video shows him singing. I don't know which one I'll pick because there's one where he's singing with another person and then there's one where he's by himself. But that's a really, really neat worship song. And then I'm going to put, and speaking of Hillsong, I'm going to put Taya singing Touch the Sky. Either that or Oceans. I don't know which one I'll pick, but Oceans is the real famous one. Um, Teo's the lead, the lead singer from Hillsong for a long, long time. And when I saw Hillsong here, um, and I went by myself, um, so I saw uh, Lauren Daigle opened up for them that night. And then, um, let's see, was this the Oceans tour? Anyway, um, so it was really awesome to see her in person and singing these songs. And um, so Touch the Sky was one of my favorites. And there's a clip of her singing that on um, the Today Show. I'll see if I can find that clip. And then for bonus, since I only gave you four, but I still think I'm only going to do one bonus. And I'm going to do You Are the Reason, which is Leona Lewis. Um, she's kind of a Mariah Carey type um, a voice, huge, big voice. And I think it's Callum Scott with her. So You Are the Reason, another ballad, just, you know, songs that I like and enjoy. And so I hope this Trials playlist will help you through the trials. And the little talk that I gave will give you inspiration for knowing what the trials are for and what they're causing and how you can persevere through them for God's kingdom. Thanks guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, I never say that in my videos and I need to say that because if you like a video, it helps the YouTube algorithm. And then if you subscribe, it helps it even more. I really want to try and, well, I'm really trying to step it up with my channel this year and make some progress with it. So if you like and subscribe, that helps me out. Thanks.